very good and lovely morning to all of you we have bright days now in bangalore after a long time and we are finally getting our share of vitamin d if we get out in the morning and face the sun so today i am welcoming you to the last lecture of this series we started this when the epidemic pandemic came in and uh, people were all locked in at home so we wanted to keep in touch with all of you so we said why not start a webinar series every saturday morning at 11 o'clock for an hour of which half an hour i speak half an hour i respond to your comments and your you know questions and stuff like uh, that incidentally uh, when i train people to become good trainers or speakers one of the tips that i give them is that when you have to give a long lecture or something you know how attention span of people has gone down considerably however good the topic may be however good the speaker may be people just don't seem to be able to pay attention the way they used to do earlier isn't it so what has happened now is i tell them that when you are say taking a one hour lecture and after 30 40 50 minutes people seem to be you know losing attention or just checking the watch to see when it gets over one of the ways to get back attention is to say lastly let me tell you something which is very significant the moment they hear the word lastly they say oh he is ending so let me pay attention and hear whatever i say it works every time it works the same way i thought i will throw open this uh, topic called the last lecture and let me see how many of you are curious now i didn't say last of what why what the context is otherwise every saturday you have some idea that we are speaking about anger we are speaking about children we are speaking about something so you have an idea today so many of you who have logged in i really appreciate and welcome you because you have logged in without knowing what is going to be told in this so called last uh, lecture isn't it so let me make it worthwhile for you to have joined us on this you know the last day of the uh, year when we are having this last uh, uh, lecture this concept or this idea came in uh, in a carnegie mellon university which has a very nice very interesting concept teachers professors who have worked with them for a very very long time who have made a mark and you know who have established themselves they are told that now you prepare a lecture which will be titled as the last lecture it will not be your last lecture you will be continuing your teaching but as a culmination of whatever you have learned and whatever you have taught over the years and decades supposing you want to concise all that and put it supposing this was your last lecture after this you have were not able to say anything what is it that you would say it's a biannual ritual which happens every year here i think it continues now also incidentally it so happened that one of the professors who was asked to do uh, conduct this lecture or give his presentation was one randy posh p a u s c h randy posh was a very well established uh, uh, professor and he had done a lot of things in his life given this uh, you know opportunity he jumped at it it was told to him many months earlier that this is the date and this is what you are going to be speaking but in the meanwhile he acquired a very serious form of cancer and doctor said your days are limited you are not going to last out very long so ironically it actually became his last lecture in fact initially people were thinking whether he will actually last out till the date of that last lecture or not but he did so when he did uh, uh, this what wisdom would he impart to the world if he knew that this was his last uh, chance it generally most of these last lectures of carnegie mellon university focuses uh, um, on the uh, you know, meaning of life everything that you want to say if you were hypothetically dying but here it was a real life situation that professor posh was actually dying okay so what he stated was 
that the sorrow he felt came from the idea of leaving his young kids behind to grow up without a father and not so much from the idea of dying. Still, he felt that he lived his life fully and that he achieved his childhood dreams. As such, he tried to inspire others to do the same before he passed away. In fact, his video is available on YouTube, The Last Lecture by Randy Posh. If you, uh, you know, log on to it, you'll find something very interesting. Just as he was starting his lecture, he suddenly fell on the stage onto the floor. And people, knowing that he's in his last stage of cancer, thought he has collapsed. But no, he purposely fell onto the floor to do push-ups. He did a number of push-ups and then got up and said, I am still in my senses physically and mentally. Therefore, now I am going to start with my lecture. And he said a lot of wonderful things. I'm not going to repeat because if you are really interested, you should see it. And first hand, either you read the book. I've got the book in the library also, the last lecture. And of course, the video, those very few people I know today want to read. So the video is, can be another uh, you know, wonderful uh, thing. Uh, before I move on, let me tell you the uh, you know, basic uh, concept or the thrust of his uh, lecture. The lesson that he wanted to convey is never give up on your dreams. Imagine this coming from a man whose life is in days, not even months and years. He said, even if they don't come true, that is your dreams, even if they don't come true the way you expect them to, sometimes you may be surprised about how well things turn out for you if you just keep on pushing hard. True satisfaction, he said, comes from helping others succeed. These are such simple, basic facts of uh, life which were presented by him. And so therefore, I don't know whether this is going to be my last lecture or not, because doctors have so far not threatened me that you're going to pop off. But it is definitely the last lecture of the uh, uh, year. So what I wanted to do was to talk to you and discuss with you how and where would you, you know, like to reflect back on the year that has gone past, which is going to end at midnight today. We are so used to looking forward, being excited, wanting to grow, wanting to achieve, that we forget something very, very basic that in order to do well in future, you have to first stop and reflect as to what you have done. If you start looking at the destination without becoming aware of where you are right now, even if you want Google to tell you on GPS how to reach a particular place, you have to first make sure that Google knows where you are right now. And then Google takes you from here to your destination, right? So very often I have seen that people are so enthusiastic. That instant gratification thing which we keep talking about, no? I want to make a new year resolution. I want to buy these new things in this year. I want to achieve that. I want to make sure I earn more money. This is what people spend time on doing. But frankly speaking, truthfully speaking, how many of us spend time in thinking, what have I actually achieved? New year is still one day away. 2022 still exists, at least for the next 12, 13 hours. What are we doing about reflecting on how this year was? I always ask people the reverse. People say, no, how is life treating you? I don't ask that. I say, how are you treating life? I have a wonderful uh, friend, Mr. Sultan. He once told a very nice little you know, mantra. He said, change is good. One should always strive for change. But change based on the experiences of the past 
is always better. And that is what I want to share with you today. That can be today, tomorrow, whenever you have free time, sit and reflect on how the year was. How did you treat the year, not how the year treated you? Please remember that. That is very important. You want to have control over your life. You want to give a direction to your life. You want to acquire some sort of satisfaction, fulfillment for your uh, life. Ask yourself what you did with your uh, existing uh, uh, life. How much of things have you did? What did you aspire? What did you think when the new year 2022 had started? And after that, how did things go? What are the good things you did? What are the mistakes that you made? What are the things that you neglected? What are the things you have regrets for? All these things have, should be looked uh, into. Just to give you a quick little uh, example. You know, there's a very nice uh, quote which says, if you have only five minutes more to live, if you know that in five minutes, your life is going to come to an end. Whom will you pick up the phone and talk to? You don't have time to go and meet anybody. But you do have five minutes to dial somebody number and talk to that person. Whom would you talk to that person? That is the first question. The second question says, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting to be told that you've got five minutes left? Then you will pick up the phone and instantly start talking to that person. If that person is so important to you, if that person is the last person in your life that you would like to talk to, what are you doing about it today? Are you giving your time, attention and affection to that person today? Or do you think that you are immortal? You will live forever and forever and you will do it later. Right now you are busy, you know, making a life out of your living or living out of your life. These are some of the very fundamental questions that we need to keep asking ourselves. Similarly, Randy Posh said that never give up on your dreams. Even if you don't achieve them the way you wanted, you may achieve them in a different manner. This is something that I have seen over years and decades of constant interaction with innumerable and different types of uh, uh, people. So do you have that type of dreams? As children, we always have uh, uh, dreams. Ha! Ah, I will digress here because Madhu has just now written about gratitude. You know what we have done in the last few days? We made a lot of exploration and this and that and brought out a small eight page gratitude diary. People keep giving New Year diaries, no? They are becoming more and more expensive and hardly anybody writes diaries these days. So we thought we cannot afford it and we don't want to unnecessarily, you know, buy diaries and present it to people who will not use them. So what we did was we designed a beautiful small little eight page gratitude diary. So gratitude looks back into the past instead of looking at the future. What am I thankful for? What is it and who is it that has made me come up to this point, 31st of December 2022? Do I express my gratitude, my thanks, my benevolence to those people or those incidents? Or those experiences which made me what I am today. Next time any one of you drops by to Banjara's office, please don't forget to ask for a copy of that gratitude diary we have made. It's a small little thing. We love to hand it over uh, to you. Please make, make uh, uh, put it. Name of the book is Gratitude Diary. Right? So just ask for gratitude diary whenever you come here and we'll give it uh, to you. Because as you know, today post and courier and these and that is quite expensive and may or may not reach. But we will definitely give it to you if you come on the honesty. The other thing that I thought of was if you can make process goals instead of destination goals. Process goals means 
कंटिन्यूस इंप्रूवमेंट कंटिन्यूस अचीवमेंट कंटिन्यूस प्रोग्रेस एंड गोल्स मीन्स आई मस्ट हैव ए ह्यूज कार और बंगलो और बैंक बैलेंस और क्वालिफिकेशन और वट वेर इट इज एंड गोल्स कैन डिसअपॉइंट यू अलॉट प्रोसेस गोल्स कैन बी थरली इंजॉयड so if those of you who are the type who says you know make this what we call as new year resolutions i would like you to set goals which are more of process goals even with children what i do is i tell them okay you are not very fond of some subject let's say math despite all your efforts you have to struggle and last time you got just 50% in math with great difficulty now compete with yourself don't look at the guys who got 100% or 80% tell yourself i already have 50% in my kitty in the next exam or test how can i increase this steadily from 50 to 52 55 57 whatever it is that is what we call as process goals you can achieve a lot if you are doing uh, that in fact i always say that it's always better to enjoy your journey rather than to keep thinking about your destination the funny thing is human nature is such that you achieve something which is your so called destination you are unhappy because you start looking for something better i have been going around on a two wheeler i have this dream i must get myself a four wheeler i struggle 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 the day i get a four wheeler i look around and say oh mine is a second hand small car look at these people with big luxury cars so my goal is to have a bigger car a more luxurious car that's how things go whether we understand it or not whether we acknowledge it or not these are the things that you know we need to look in into and that is why i said enjoy the journey the destination will take care of uh, itself don't bother about a specific goal that you have to you know look at 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 the same time there's one more thing which i want to tell whenever i talk about it people think it is so morbid and so negative but it is not let me assure you when we are closing this year and you are going to be stepping into the new year as a good winding up process and to make sure that you put your things in order have you made a will w i l l will a legal document it's very simple and now with computerization in registrar's office it has become full proof it costs a few thousand rupees fees to the lawyer and the registration charges nothing much but if you do that and you register your will you'll be doing a great favor to your successors and this is not restricted to people who have got you know immovable property even if you have a bank balance even if you have a vehicle if you can just write down everything that i possess whenever i pass off will go to x y z that's it lawyer will help you to draft a one page uh, will and you can go ahead and uh, uh, do it the other uh, thing is uh, you know at the end of the year to look for the same way as i said gratitude we should also look for forgiveness we have done each one of us have done something or the other which we should not have done during this year can i make a list of the things that i have done which i should not have which could have possibly hurt somebody which could have deprived somebody of something can i make a list and if nothing else seek forgiveness great faiths and religions have always taught us uh, this that you should seek forgiveness but i'm not even going up to that spiritual level i'm saying on a day to day human level hey i neglected you in this, this this sorry i think i was not nice to you 
I think that one particular day I shouted at you, or I think I deprived you of something. Can I look for forgiveness so that I become aware and I start moving on to uh, things? Similarly, can you, you know, list down a few things like will, of course, is a legal document, but something that you would like to leave behind for uh, you know, posterity, something with, thereby you can say that, you know, this is my message to you. Like I said, that last lecture type of thing. You don't have to make an elaborate lecture, but one, two, three, four points which you can write and give. I have done it. I have written notes to people who are important to me and put them in sealed envelopes and kept them. That will be my message. That is to be opened whenever I pop off. That is my message to say that, okay, I'm gone. And this is the last message that I wanted to leave you uh, with. Such simple acts, believe me, can go a long way in not only enriching your life, making you feel fulfilled, but also making other people uh, you know, um, happy. You're aware of the fact that, you know, it's only when you die that people suddenly start paying you a lot of uh, um, attention. In the media, haven't you seen, they wait, 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 even if a person is very sick, and a person is likely to die, they will only keep giving you medical reports. But the day he passes off, the media will be full of that person's whole life from A to Z. That is what I don't understand. If you know somebody who is important to you, but who has either become very old or is not keeping good health or whatever it is, if Everything works out fine. The other person may even last longer than you. You may die before him. Doesn't matter. But logically speaking, rationally speaking, if the person is much older than you, if the person is not really keeping good health or if the person is actually suffering from some debilitating illness, this is the time to talk to those people and review what your relationship has been. What that person's relationship has meant to you. Haven't you seen in the media? The moment the person dies, everybody has something to say. Oh, he was so great. I was so happy. I learned so much from him. I benefited from his relationship. He is not there to read or to listen to what you are saying. Do it when the person is alive. It's a very small gesture, but it goes a long way. There was an amazing humorist long back called R. Buchwald, B-U-C-H-W-A-L-D. First name is Art, A-R-T. A-R-T, Art, Buchwald, that is B-U-C-H-W-A-L-D. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. He was a great writer and humorist. For years and decades, his syndicated columns used to come in newspapers all over the world. Finally, he won that Pulitzer Prize, which is the highest prize given in journalism and all that. Uh, that. At one point, he suffered kidney failure. He was quite old also. And he started dialysis. Doctors gave him a few weeks to live. Then he said that I want to cut myself off dialysis. I had lived a fulfilling and nice life. I don't want to spend the last weeks or months of my life you know, strapped on to some gadgets and instruments and all that. So I don't want dialysis. Death will come faster. So be uh, it. The interesting uh, thing was that he moved into a hospice, an old age home where, you know, he knew that the next few days he's going to pass out. He moved in there and he wrote a book, Too Soon to Say Goodbye. Read it if you have the inclination and leisure. Too soon to say goodbye by this great humorist writer, Art Buckwald. The last year, he had the opportunity for a victory lap. And I think he was really grateful to it, his son said. He had an opportunity to write his book about his experience. And he went out the way he wanted to go on his own terms. The funny thing is, he was in a hurry to complete the books because doctors had told him that you have no more time left. You have stopped dialysis. Your kidney is not functioning. But you know what? 
He lived 11 months after that. That's the beauty of nature. I have had, in, a, in my little work in hospitals and all that, I have had a very touching incident where a small child, a 10-year-old boy, was told by the doctors that he's just going to pass away. There's no hope left. It came from a remote village. Parents took the child back. And though they were preparing for his death, the boy refused to die. Not only that, he started getting healthier. Almost a year went past. And the boy was almost back to normal. And his parents were so thrilled. They went back. This happened in Mumbai. They went back with the boy to Mumbai to show them that, see, this child has recovered. And the doctor, who had put in a lot of effort to treat him, had tried his level best to see whether he can save his life and had given up on him. They said, we want to show this child to the doctor. And you know what the hospital people said? The doctor is no more. He has passed away. And that is what is the interesting part. That nobody can determine who or what or where. You remember that movie called Anand? There was a wonderful dialogue of Johnny Walker which says, Zindagi or Maut upar wale ke haat mein hai jahan pana. Kaun jane kiski door kab kaise ujjaye. That is the type of spirit that I am talking about. There are ends. There are last lectures. There are last days of the year. And someday or the other, whether it is tomorrow or whether it is 50 years from now, there is a last day of life also. Taking both these things into account, what are we doing in terms of looking at, you know, reflecting on what we have done and what we need to do? Do not let the year close with just thinking about the future. Ah, new year has come. This year, I'm going to buy a new this, this, this. This year, I'm going to try this out. This year, I will go on a vacation to some place. This year, I will do this or that. Good. Nice. I'm happy for you. I hope you achieve that and much more than what you are aspiring for. But like I told you, change based on the experience of the past is the best form of change. You want change, you want success, you want to achieve. Base it on the experiences that you have already had. And to do that, reflect on the past. I'm using today as an example because it incidentally happens to be the last day of the year. And thankfully, it is also the weekend. So tomorrow, most of you have an off being a Sunday, think, reflect, analyze about how the last one year has been, the last 10 years, the last whatever number of years you have lived. And look at it from a very simple perspective, which is how did I lead life? How did I deal with life? Never ever do it in the other way around. X has been bad to me. Y cheated me. Z has been rude to me. A has put me down. No. If you spend this last days of the year thinking about others, you will not have time to think about yourself. What have I done? Be proud of your achievements. Be happy with them. Yes. This is what I have done and I am proud of it. No harm. In fact, it's good. But at the same time, reflect over things which you should not have done or which you could have done better or which can still be changed. It's never too late in my form. That's what you know. Randy Posh also said. Never give up on your dreams because you don't know in what way they will come. With that thought, I'll take my usual one minute break. I am really happy that there are already so many wonderful and perfect, you know, really inspiring comments uh, which have come in the chat box. 
I'll come and deal with it. But right now, for a minute, I leave you with our director, Purnima, who has something interesting to tell you. Good morning. Namaste. Yes, Sri Devi. Namaste to you and a very good uh, morning to each one of you who is there over here. <clears throat> and uh, I, I was uh, hearing Ali tell that, um, you know, reflect back and uh, check uh, what's happened in the last year. And, uh, you know, then, then make plans and may go ahead. So thank you. Good morning. Many, many thanks. Yes. So... In the, on that line, I was I thought uh, that let me just give in my little a bit to this whole thing that while you are, um, you know, uh, reflecting back, not only on the last year, but maybe on many years also, right? Because it's not that it stops on Jan 1st. Things keep uh, going back and you think about a lot of things. So I was just thinking from my side that while you share this conversation which you have had today, this talk which you have had today, if you are you know, going to share this with anyone else significant in your life, loved ones in your uh, life, it may come up that possibly if you have happy moments, we are very happy for you. In case you, know, you have any kind of sad moment or some regrets, some disappointments, or if you are annoyed about something, um, it may happen that leaves you a little emotionally drained or it may leave those people a little emotionally drained and our little bit which we can do uh, from Banjara as a team is that we have got a fabulous uh, team of uh, counsellors and they are ever ready to be meeting anyone and also yes Suchetna today's topic is very uh, insightful absolutely and um, you know anyone who does feel a little run down emotionally, any language that you want. In case you uh, can come face to face, excellent. Our counselors will be here at the uh, academy, you know, to help them out. When you're sharing that, hey, I heard this talk and it was the last lecture and uh, uh, this, 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 this happened. And then they say, oh, I have some regrets. I should not have done this, you know, something like that. So one is face to face counseling can happen. The other thing is telephonic. Even if you're not in the city, we are based in Bangalore, right? You must be knowing. So even if they are not in Bangalore, doesn't matter. Nothing should stop them from, you know, seeking help or guidance. So our team of counselors is available over here who can even make a video chat uh, with them or, a, um, you know, normal telephonic uh, call. And if they are the kind who would like to write, then they can even write an email to us Again, we have got an excellent team of uh, counselors who are so particular about ensuring that uh, messages and replies are given and the, uh, you know, the person, whoever has uh, written a mail to us, gets their reply also immediately. So that's something I thought I should tell you. And um, while, uh, you know, the uh, hand uh, in the hands of the youth lies, you know, the uh, future of this world. It's also important that uh, we guide them well with regards to their career. Our whole team at Banjara, we have got five, six uh, career counselors who do immense amount of work guiding um, youngsters, uh, maybe right from class 10th onwards, 10th, 12th, having done graduation. We also have many who come to us after their retirement because 58 years of age, 60 years of age, you retire. But you have another 20 solid years where, you know, you can be productive, you can yield excellent results for yourself, for the society. And they say, I have done all these because I wanted some money and I wanted a good, secure life. Now I want to have a purpose in life. So they also come down and we do what is called as free career counseling. We uh, help, uh, you know, guide people to select their uh, careers. That is also something uh, you can uh, do. So if you think that anyone who thinks that possibly they can bring in a nice zing in the new year can uh, also uh, you know drop in again this is this can be done telephonically also you know we do video calls or we even do 
normal calls you come in meet us face to face career counseling also is offered free at the academy and after that if they so need uh, what um, banjara has done ali has made a, you know a very uh, good holistic career assessment so even that can be done so that's our little humble contribution from banjara for all those who reflect back on the last year and years and want to work on their coming year from tomorrow onwards wish you all a very happy new year and the best of times to be coming in and over to ali ali yes i'm back to according to me the more exciting part of this because i get bored listening to my voice but i thoroughly enjoy it when i start reading the chat box and today's chat box has got a lot of very interesting comments and questions we will start off with sanjana the last 5 days has been my time for self reflection it's my favorite part of saying goodbye to the year it says regular practice fantastic sanjana i wish it rubs off on other people and people do that instead of just getting excited where you are spending new year's eve where are you going to party where are you going for vacation instead of that like sanjana did five days of focusing reflecting on how the year has been and what you have done okay navina says so well pointed out how did i treat life in 2022 really went to reflective and introspective mode please do that i'm happy that some of you have taken this up seriously please go ahead and do it and spread this message to the others also who are not even aware that they should be doing these things right hmm shika says yes ali i am living my dream not the way i had visualized it when i met you 5 years back but yes i am enjoying every bit of me wonderful shika you deserve that more than anything else because i've seen the way you have been carving out your future creating path where there is no path and that you can look back upon and reflect today and then set your plans for the coming year navina says flowing with the flow and living and cherishing every moment of the life to the fullest has been mostly my way of life in 2022 yes sometimes you need to go with the flow sometimes as the song in three idiots said you have to go against the tide and swim against the river you decide when and how you would like to take your direction right akila says the best thing i did was joining banjara academy in 2022 thanks to my supportive family and banjara team yes akila i think you should pick up this gratitude booklet and fill that in and give it to your family members who encourage you and who made sure <clears throat> that they supported you so that you are doing and you are living your uh, dream and of course we are always with you navina says i think how we cherish the journey in achieving any goal is most important exactly she has used the right word cherish please cherish what you are doing enjoy it even if it is painful at sometimes even if there is a hurdles and setbacks manisha all the way from thane in mumbai manisha says immense gratitude to banjara dcs and of course to you ali which brought a phenomenal transformation in my life by all the teachings received enjoying the beautiful journey of life yes manisha and I, along with enjoying that reflect over everything that happened this year okay madhu says i have become strong and courageous to take my life as it comes and support my husband and sons though it was difficult in the beginning but i made myself to understand to support their dreams and be happy you know enjoying somebody else to fulfill their dreams is a wonderful way of carving out your life slowly things have become more easy for me and spread happiness and peace hats off to you madhu and congratulations for having made this effort 
and she said something very significant mind you initially it looks very difficult over a period of time it becomes easier and easier so go for it mary says good morning ali good morning to everyone i should be doing my will which i will do it thank you for reminding me yes mary and all of you if you have not made your will as i said now it has become a very simple procedure just a few thousand uh, uh, rupees maybe half a day with your uh, lawyer uh, making the points and an hour or so in the registrar's office and you are done and remember you can always change it it's not final sometime later you realize that this person whom you had you know built something uh, uh, has turned out to be a nasty creature who can knock off that person from the will and a lighter note you know there was this gentleman who grew very old and he had lost his hearing his doctor said now we have this thing called cochlear implant instead of hearing aids we can implant a device in your ear by which you can start hearing and so very simple surgical procedure you can finish it and go back home the same day he did it and he went back and the doctor said come back after a month and we will review how your progress has been he went back after a month and he said i am hearing very clearly and very nicely now so doctor said your family members must be very happy now that you got back your hearing isn't it he said no i have not told them that i've got back my hearing but i have already changed my will twice in the last one month that's on a later note okay ha ah, madhu says forgiveness and let go made me more happy and blissful it takes a lot of courage i can tell you madhu you have done it so many other people are struggling with it letting go forgiving other why should i forgive when he has been so nasty to me why should i allow this person to go scot free in fact by not forgiving you are chaining yourself don't you want to go scot free now that whatever had to happen has happened and it is over instead of that by hanging on to that person's and allowing him to come into your thoughts you are chaining and restricting yourself neha says two simple words gratitude and forgiveness yet so powerful and meaningful they can change our inner world thank you dr ali and vijay lakshmi says hello ali and team banjara yes forgiveness and let go made me happy and always be in peace of mind great i'm so happy vijay that you have done this it's a great achievement i must congratulate you and all others who have learnt this art of forgiveness okay sujitna says i've achieved something in 2022 that wasn't possible with me in the last 20 years that's joining dcs heartfelt thanks this is what Ron, randy posh said when he said don't let go of your dreams sometimes it takes 20 years to do something like that in fact that reminded me that as a youngster i wanted to learn how to fly a plane i learned it 25 years later when i was in my mid 40s by learning how to fly a micro light aircraft so you don't know when and where opportunities will come in right Navina says the movie The Sky Is Pink is a wonderful movie. It basically shows how one can live life to the fullest, knowing that the person is going to die any uh, moment. That looks very interesting. I'm making a note of it. The Sky Is Pink. I would definitely like to see the movie. Thanks a lot, Navina. How the entire family lived every moment to the fullest. with the person who was going to die yes we are so scared of death no and yet the only thing that is sure in life is death why not face it why not enjoy it why not welcome it as in when it uh, comes there was a very nice quote of charlie brown which says that you know somebody said that uh, you know we uh, live only once so charlie brown replies and says no we die only once we live every day make that a slogan in your life ha ah, sara says ownership and accountability to oneself that is very important sara 
you should take in ownership and you should be accountable for your actions. Right. Vinita says, same here, best thing was to join Banjara in 2018 and now as a counselor, every day is a new experience and new learning. Thank you, Ali, Purnima, Sridhar, and all the mentors in Banjara for your valuable inputs and Ali's talks and for showing me my new journey of life. Wishing the entire Banjara team a happy and fruitful new year. And you're all Banjara. Is there no question of Banjara team being restricted only to those people who come to 418 first main, first block, RT Nagar? I consider all of you as team and more than team as family because you in various ways, each one of you contributes to what we are and what we are doing. Ah, Kumar says, many thanks, Ali and team, for your enormous efforts and zeal. Then we have Suchetna saying, today's topic is very insightful and an eye-opener one. Thank you, Ali and everyone at uh, Manjara. And there are people behind the screen huh? right now sitting in front of me is uh, Anis, whom you never see on these Saturdays. But she comes in much before 11 o'clock, sets up things, puts everything in proper order, makes the slides that uh, you see uh, almost every Saturday. So people like Anis, there are so many of our team members who are quietly working behind the scene. They also deserve the same congratulations, right? Raji says, uh, wishing everyone at Banjara a very happy new year and thank you, Dr. Ali, for making our Saturdays more reflective and thought-provoking as most of our days are mired in mundane activities. Break free from that, all of you. I think Raji has given you a very nice thing. Break free from that mundane activities. I'm not saying you shirk your responsibilities, but always have some time set aside to do something different. Mary says, the most beautiful thing that has happened to me in 2022 is how beautifully Banjara has trained me to become a counselor. It makes me feel proud that I am not now able to make a difference in people's lives through counseling them. Yes, Mary, there's no doubt about the joy that you get when you can help somebody else enrich their lives. Right? Navina says, you have given such insightful and reflective sessions over the past two years that it has given so much to think and share and work uh, upon. Eternally grateful. And I am also grateful to all of you, Navina, and everyone else, because you provide me with the inputs which I give you back through my either writings or my talks. Shamla says, please give tips on how to create a vision board to follow in 2023. Yes, I shall do that. We will definitely take that up. Ah, Saraf Saf from Maharashtra says, forget bad feelings and welcome positivity and good ones. That's the spirit. Regardless of your age, regardless of your status, regardless of your whatever life is dealing you, welcome positivity. You can do it. Nobody can control your mind. It's only you who can control or give a direction to your mind. Hmm. Madhu says, only you made me to be like that, thanks to Banjara. Yes. And you have worked on it. Each one of you has worked on whatever you have achieved. I'm a strong believer in that. We can only be conduits. Mary says, big thanks to Ali and Banjara team for helping me discover my core strengths. Yes. When you reflect, know what I've been telling you today, reflect back, think how the year went, what you did, what you achieved, what you failed. That also helps you to understand your core strengths, as Mary very rightly said. It helps you to decide that, yes, maybe I can do much more in this area. Or maybe, no, this area is not my core strength. So can I you know, make a lateral change and move into something better? Shobha says, you people of Banjara make me strong and tolerable. Thank you, 2022. I'm enjoying DCS. Rakshanda says, today I remember Raja and Nalini. Raja is no more with us. He passed away in 2011. It's 11 years since he passed away, but his memories are still alive with me. He was the strongest pillar of Banjara that I had right from the inception. They helped me through some tough decisions and a big thanks to Ali and Banjara for molding me into what I am today. 
Thank you very much. I feel very humbled when you express thanks like that. You know, I don't think I'm doing anything so great, but still, when you genuinely and from your heart acknowledge things like this, it really makes me feel very humbled and very motivated to do what we are. Navina says, giving genuine positive strokes and motivating people makes me feel so rejuvenated. It's become my way of life. That's what counseling is all about. It should be a way of life. Thanks to a wonderful team, Banjara, for inculcating this in me and my counseling journey. Hmm. Sarah says, I practice forgiveness and let go meditation on a regular basis. Yes, there are actually ways and means, you know, if you want to uh, understand how to do forgiveness and letting go on a systematic, there are meditation techniques. There are so many things which you can take, which will help you to start off doing it. If you're confused later on, it will become easier and you yourself will be able to do it. Ah, Vijaya says, Ali, after joining this year, it has helped me to introspect on myself and it has helped me to enjoy my time immensely. Thank you, Ali and Team Banjara. This is a time to say goodbye to 2022 and welcome a new year to do many things. Happy New Year to all of you. Mm. Sri Rajeshwari, who's been with us for a very, very long time, a very committed, dedicated uh, counselor who's been doing work beyond basic counseling in so many areas. She's written some wonderful things, which I think all of us should read. Sri Rajeshwari says, wishing everyone at Banjara a happy new year and thank you, Ali, for your wishes. What happened? Ah. This year, I was able to self-publish two more children's books. That's what I was telling you. She's been doing a lot of wonderful writing. So she was able to publish two more children's books that are especially helpful for visual learners. These are the, this is the true education and learning that we can give to the younger generation. Wow, Madhu says, Banjara is my lifeline. Thanks a lot, Madhu. We are all each other's lifeline in this. Sri Rajeshwari also says, hope, forgiveness and gratitude are helping me. It helps all of us, as you can see by the comments which some of you are putting up. Okay. Akila says, I agree, Ali. Everything seems difficult in the beginning. I was like, how do I manage my younger son being in 10, the elder son moving out of state for pursuing his studies, my job, DCS in Banjara and managing house. To my surprise, I did much more than that. It's our mindset and attitude that helps taking things ahead happily and cherishing every moment of our life. So when you achieve this, like how Akila did in this year, reflect back, see how you did, see what you did well, see where you made mistakes and keep on working on it. Mary says on this last day, I thank you Ali and all that you have turned me into. I owe my gratitude to Banjara for the rest of my life. Very touched, very touching. Sri Devi, who has been really part of us and has done wonderful work for Banjara, says, I love Dr. Bhavani's forgiveness meditation class. Yeah, that's what I was saying. There's so many ways and means and techniques, even if you feel, yes, I want to practice forgiveness, but how do I do it? I'm not sure about it. Thankful to the same to Ali and Banjara. It is helping me change myself and everyone including my counselees for improving and enjoying their life for the good. So Banjara Academy, my mentors and classmates are always in my prayers. Rashmi says it was 2006 that I joined Banjara. Wonderful learning and still the learning continues. God bless you all. The learning continues. This has been our intention. It's not that you attend so many classes and learn these, you know, particular topics or something. If we can spur you on to continuous learning, that makes us really happy. Madhu says, I'm grateful to Banjara family members who made me how to live happily when no one came to give me a helping hand. Hmm. I'm really overwhelmed. Mary says, I like the thought-provoking idea which you shared today, Ali, to write a last note message to people. I'm starting doing that. Please do, all of you. Divya says, when the session started, 
I was introspecting about my growth in life compared to previous year. There's a drastic transformation in my thinking. As you say, I'm aware of my needs and want both in relationship and emotions. All this happened because of Banjara and DCS. Thanks a bunch. To be part of Banjara, I feel blessed. I also really feel blessed. And let me tell those you know who are not part of Banjara or not done courses with us, when you see all these things coming, please understand that these are not sponsored comments or paid news or anything like that. This comes from the heart. And it makes us humbled more than anything else. Sheila says, Saturday sessions work as revision sessions and reinforcement of all the learnings from DCS. Help me to stay on track. Thanks, Ali. Mind management is the key to unlock the peace and happiness within. Yes, manage your mind and everything else will be automatically uh, managed. We are coming towards the end of the hour. Let me start going a little faster. Anis will help me. Archana says, when blaming others and finding faults, you live others' life. And when you forgive and let go, you start living your life. Very well said, Archana. Yes, next. Madhu says, Bajara made me understand people and go on contributing. It's very satisfying. Thanks a lot, Madhu. Navina says, I think, what happened? Navina, I think most of us want you to continue this every life. Ye dil mange more. Please, please, it's a humble request. Yes, Navina, it's my pleasure. As long as I'm capable, I will do it. Sheila says, Happy New Year to one and all. Let's make it more meaningful in as many ways possible to as many people as possible. I like that part of it. Aparna says, Thank you. All of you inspire me so much. Thank you, Ali, for making each one of us feel part of Banjara always. And Happy New Year. Mary says, after DCS, my life is less stressed, unlike earlier. Calmness and peace is sailing me in life. I'm surprised myself and I owe it to DCS. Faster than this. Vandana says, Happy New Year, Dr. Ali and team. Happy New Year. Same to you, Vandana. Sudha says, my confidence, commitment, and relationship with Banjara happened with DCS. Wishing team Banjara the best. Happy New Year. Achana says, when blaming others and finding faults, you live for others. And when you forgive, you let go, you start living your life. Yes, that's right. Achana, no. Next. Uh, Sri Devi Srinivas uh, says, heartfelt thanks to the entire Banjara family for giving me a memorial 2022. Happy New uh, Year. Navneet Kumar Saraf from Maharashtra says, Goodbye 2022 and welcome 2023. That is what happens, what we call as change. Whenever, you know, you ring out the old and ring in the new. Every time there is a change, every time there is something happening. Am I anticipating it? Am I looking forward to it? Am I adapting to it? That is a great message which I want every one of you to look into. Like Renu says, your sessions lead us to self-introspection and self-reflection. That's the intention, Renu, and I'm happy that I'm really being able to achieve that to whatever little extent. As I said, it's a seed which I sow in your minds, and I hope it germinates, and you take care of the plant, and you make the plant grow, and you get the benefits of whatever the plant has to offer you. My job is to just plant that little seed in your mind. That's all there is to it. It takes me very little effort. But if you work on it, it takes you a very, very long uh, way. And there's lots that each one of you can do in life. Let us be thankful for everything that we have received and we have achieved in this uh, one year of 2022. Let us also learn lessons from whatever has happened uh, in this. Tejasmini says, I'm grateful to the whole Banjara uh, uh, team, uh, support system by Purni, Srinivas, Anis. Extend gratitude to all of you and a happy new year to uh, all of you. With that, let me end up on a very, very happy note. I'm feeling very thrilled, very excited about what has happened. And let us now welcome tomorrow 
the new year and the beginning of another change. Very, very happy new year to all of you. Have a wonderful year and a wonderful life. Enjoy yourself. Jai Hind. Twenty-three.